Good afternoon. I'm in the process of disassembling my rocket heater and I thought I'd show you a couple interesting items. First of all, when I put the insulation between the heat riser and the insulation shroud, I really packed it down tight. I took a 2x2 two two and I went around and around and I packed it down as tight as I could get it. And when I took things apart, for, and I don't know why, the insulation had disappeared enough so it had settled at least eight inches from where it, I left it. Now as I started vacuuming out the vermiculite, I got down about an inch and a half or so, and you can actually see how the stainless steel has fused itself to the vermiculite. And I found that fascinating. And there's, there's the vermiculite, but it's just fused right into it. And it's all, all the way down on the heat riser, and I'll show you in a second, just like this. It's about, I don't know, what is that? Quarter, a 5 sixteenths inch thick, just fused all the way down. Uh, another interesting item is uh, they, the heater was cold when I started taking it apart, and the stainless steel actually sounds like it's crystallizing. You, you, you know, when you hear ice on a real cold night, just snap and crackle. Well, the stainless steel made that same kind of noise. Uh, I find that kind of fascinating. I'll show you inside. Okay, the, the we're heater looking here down in inside the rocket heater now. And there's the outer shell, the hot water tank. Here's my insulation shroud, and the hot gases go down here. And looking down inside here now, you can see how that vermiculite has just fused to the stainless steel. Very interesting. So I'll finish uh, getting this vermiculite out of here, and then I'll pull out heat riser out, and we'll take a look at that. Another thing is, I had originally thought that I could at least reuse the vermiculite in my garden, but I think with this amount of contamination in it from the stainless steel, I'm unfortunately it's destined for the landfill. But interesting. This is a view inside the uh, outlet going to the chimney, and this is. Uh, all that's in there after four days of burning all day long. Just a little bit of, I mean, there's just nothing, just powder in there. So as far as efficiency, I mean, this was top notch, if I could just get it to hold together. Here's a look down inside. I've taken the insulation shroud off, and I'm just starting to remove the vermiculite from the base. Um, and it, I've tried to get this heat riser out of here. It was just a slip fit before, and it, it appears like it's welded uh, to the combustion chamber. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get this out of here at all. First of all, i got to get this insulation out of here. Okay, I have uh, the majority of the insulation vacuumed out. That insulation there on the side of the heat riser is fused. Uh, I've tried knocking it off and uh, it will not come off, so I'll have to wait until I get the heat riser out to see. But if you look down there, the combustion chamber, you can see uh, the result of extreme heating. So let's see if I can get this heat riser out of here. I don't know how well this is going to turn out, but you can see the flaking uh, right near that bulb, just below that bulb. And so that shiny material is what I was finding in the ash pan. And you can see the flaking all the way around. Now this area is on the upper side of the uh, discharge side of the heat riser. And 
lastly, here's a look at the combustion chamber um, installed in the inside the the heater. All in all, I guess it doesn't look too bad, but again, that's only 20 some odd hours of use. Uh, I'm not going to destroy this thing. I, uh, uh, at some point in time in the future, if I have a need to abuse myself, uh, I may try to make uh, a new heat riser out of castable uh, refractory cement. Uh, the black version is rated at 2200 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. There's still a problem of uh, thermal shock and uh, erosion from the flame. Uh, the, the flame and air is just like water on, on rock and given enough time it's going to erode it. And as I told you earlier, uh, here is my Ozert style waste oil burner uh, finally resurrected. Uh, I can tell you for certain I will never ever cut this apart no matter what I build. This just works really well. Um, there you can probably see the feed rate at the moment. Matter of fact, I just started that up here again, came back in the shop. Uh, I went back out to Spike's uh, website and I discovered that on my original build, I made these holes here too big. Uh, they're only supposed to be about a quarter inch. Uh, also, I discovered in my combustion chamber, I, I needed to add some more uh, larger holes at the top. And that was just my error. Uh, I didn't follow his instructions uh, carefully. But this works really well. And the, the downside is I'm stuck with one fuel. And you really do need electricity. Uh, because most of the heat goes up the chimney. I do have a diffuser plate inside here trying to radiate the heat out towards the outside, but the heat elevator sure does uh, help uh, suck off uh, a lot more heat. I'll put a link uh, below to Spike's website where he goes into great detail on how he, over 12 years, uh, came up with this design. And while not funny, uh, his account of the first burn uh, w when he had this inside his house, it is a humorous. Although at the time, I'm sure he was scared to death. Uh, it came pretty close to burning his house down. And it's uh, worth remembering that these are very crude de devices and that we are literally playing with fire. I do not leave this uh, heater for any length of time. I've had a couple instances where uh, I got too much oil in the burn pot and I've had this thing all the way up and down cherry red. Very unnerving and you're not exactly sure what to do with it. It's, it's a freight train out of control, that's for sure. So I keep a close watch on it and uh, I don't let it get out of hand. So that's it. Hopefully we'll move on to uh, better and uh, more successful projects. Take care.